During the last episode of Parenting with Emotional Intelligence, we talked about how you can teach your child to self-soothe, which is a part of emotional processing. However, there are several nuances to emotional processing that I want to expand upon today, such as when is the best time to start applying emotional intelligence to parenting and the best ages for each stage of emotional development. So I took a survey regarding this very topic a while back where I asked parents at what age did they feel was most appropriate to start teaching their children emotional intelligence. And I was shocked. Close to 70% of parents said that this should be taught to kids that are in middle and high school. And I'm assuming that this is due to all those mood swings that are brought on by hormonal changes and the peer pressure that this age group typically faces and feels more than other age groups. Problem with waiting until children are preteens or teenagers is that they're in the midst of an emotional vortex at this time in their lives. Adding these skills now is just going to be very challenging for them. Just take a moment and think of a time in your own life where you were probably the most confused and stressed out. Do you think you would have taken well to someone trying to teach you how to better manage your emotions at that time? Unlikely. We're just not in the right state of mind. The truth is it's never too early and it's never too late to teach emotional intelligence to your child. However, the earlier, the better, and ideally, prior to age six or seven. Because at age seven, children have already developed a strong foundation for their communication, uh, how they think about themselves, their peers. And by this age, they've also likely adopted the social scripts, conditioned behaviors, beliefs, and mindsets that have been set for them by society. And well, you, your immediate or their immediate family. And while altering these habits and scripts aren't impossible, it is, however, more challenging. Because when we've developed habits or conformed to norms, they're no longer running at a sub or they're no longer running at a conscious level, but they're now running at a subconscious level. So in order to change these elements of ourselves, we have to dig deep, sift, and sort and detach them from our identity. Again, not impossible, but it takes longer and it's more effort. So where and when do we begin to teach kids emotional intelligence? Now, no matter the age of your child or if you're not even a parent yet, this is the time to start now. And it starts with you. Teaching is doing. Lip service, meaning telling our kids what to do, isn't how they're going to learn. While they may do as they're told for fear of punishment, what you're really teaching them is to adopt the ideology of do as I say, not as I do. And I don't believe parents do this out of laziness or ill intent. What's more likely the case is that parents, maybe you, want to teach their children more positive behaviors and mindsets, but they fail to consistently model the appropriate behavior because, well, they or you were never taught these essential skills by your own parents or their own parents. And so this cycle tends to continue until we are taught or until we learn for ourselves how to develop the essential skill of emotional intelligence. So if we want to teach our children how to be emotionally intelligent, we have to start by teaching ourselves and invite them on the journey with us. So as I go through the stages of teaching you now to teach your children to understand and process their emotions, think of how to apply these same strategies or levels of awareness to your own life. Okay, let's begin with expecting parents. Now I'm briefly going to touch on this because I'm going to expand on this in another episode. But did you know that your emotional health and agility while expecting can affect your little one before and after they're born? Just as your diet affects your overall health and your fetus's health, so does your emotional diet. If you're consistently stressed and living in a state of survival mode, 
it can have negative effects on your baby. Aside from the increased risk of miscarriage, premature birth, and low birth weight, infants whose mothers experience stress or poor emotional management while carrying are shown to have increased risk of irritability, digestive and respiratory issues, difficulty sleeping, cognitive delays, as well as behavioral and social emotional issues after they're born. Your babies can literally inherit your behavior and stress. So if you're an expecting parent, emotional regulation is super important to ensure that your child is off to a great start in regards to their own emotional and physical health when they're born. After they're born, your emotional health will continue to have an impact on your child for as long as you are around or they're alive. So if that gives you a bit of anxiety, don't fret. Again, it's never too late to start to teach them or to teach yourself emotional intelligence. So on the next episode, as I said before, I'm going to do a whole episode dedicated to how to develop emotional intelligence as an expecting parent. Today, however, I'm primarily going to focus on emotional processing for children ages like one day old into the preteens. So infants, how do we teach infants emotional intelligence? Again, it starts with you. Do you find yourself yelling around your infant? Do you find yourself in high states of anxiety, stress, or depression when you're around your little one? And how do you currently manage your emotions when you're around them or just in general? So while we may not have memories from being a baby, our brains at that age are constantly absorbing the millions of bits of data all around us. And we're using that data to build neuro pathways. When we're stressed, others pick up and are affected by our vibes that we're giving off, especially infants. So if you do find yourself yelling or stressed out around your child, you're not a bad parent, you're a stressed parent. A parent who has unmet needs, whether those needs may be rest, support, understanding, personal time to decompress, whatever the case may be. Nonetheless, every response has a consequence And the consequences of not effectively managing our own emotions and stress will have a negative effect on those around us. In this case, your infant or your child, right? So check in with yourself consistently and ask yourself, how are you feeling? Or ask yourself, how am I feeling? For instance, if you feel overwhelmed because your baby is inconsolable and you feel you're about to emotionally break, know that one, You're not losing your mind. This is common for many parents. And two, let that be an alert to yourself that you need to quickly find an energy renewer. Now that could be taking five minutes to step away and collect yourself while you safely secure your child in a safe environment or hand them off to, you know, someone you trust and reassure yourself in those moments that while this feeling is intense, This too shall pass. Emotions are like weather patterns. They come and they go. And sometimes we find ourselves clinging to our sanity as we fiercely weather this storm. In those moments, focus on the feelings that you experienced when you first met your child. The wonder and the love that you felt when you first held them in your arms, the overwhelming and miraculous joy that filled your heart. And at the same time, acknowledge the unpleasant emotions that you're currently feeling without judgment, without guilt. Yes, oh, I'm feeling exhausted. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling burnt out. And this too shall pass. Take a few deep breaths. And only focus on that present moment. Take it one second at a time. 
and for your baby and helping them to soothe their emotions. The Gottman Institute found that babies tend to emotionally self-soothe by suckling or sucking on something like a pacifier or a bottle. And also, this was interesting, they found that listening to play music songs, like the wheels on the bus go round and round, or maybe the hokey pokey, tend to soothe them better than lullabies. Go figure, I had no clue. As your infant becomes a toddler, you can expand their level of emotional awareness by teaching them to identify their emotions as well as expressing and labeling their own emotions. By you also naming your emotions in front of them, you're modeling for them that it's healthy and natural to be aware of what we're feeling and that our emotions are valid and not something for us to be ashamed of. What we don't want to do is invalidate their feelings by saying things like stop crying or stop acting like that or stop behaving that way. This invalidates their feelings and teaches them that expressing their emotions is not acceptable. Also, at this age, so we're talking about toddlers here, at this age, we can't expect them not to fully express their emotions and have temper tantrums. They're just going to release it all at once. That's that's the way they operate. <laughs> they're not emotionally mature enough to control what they're feeling. That said, take those opportunities to work through their emotions with them. For example, if they're crying and screaming, you may say something like, I can tell that you're really upset right now and have a lot of emotional energy. I'm sure that doesn't feel good, does it? So when we feel strong emotions, it feels good for us to be able to release those emotions and let them go. So here is where you may also offer some suggestions for how they can do that. For instance, you may say, would you like to stomp that emotion out or would you like to scream it out in a pillow? Once they've released their emotional energy, you may want to shift into a more calming exercise with them like deep breathing or simply give them a hug or cuddles and love and hold that space for them. As your child matures emotionally, you can expand upon their feelings by not only helping them to identify their emotions, but also working to identify their emotional triggers and patterns. Now, the age at which your child is ready to move to this stage really depends on their personal emotional maturity. Children who've been taught from an early age to understand and express their emotions may be ready for this stage as early as four years old, whereas a child that hasn't experienced, you know, emotional development, they may be seven or eight before they're ready. There's no right or wrong age. It just really depends on the work that they've done up until this point. This isn't a reflection of your child's intelligence because emotional intelligence is not innate It's a skill that must be developed, a skill that many adults have yet to develop. So don't feel bad if your child is older once you start working on this stage with them. That is totally fine. So when you notice that your child has a good foundation built around their emotional vocabulary and they're able to identify the emotions that they're feeling, then this is the time to teach them how to mitigate emotional triggers and develop a strategy for how to prepare for stressful or triggering situations. This is a bit tricky because there's no one size fits all strategy for this. It really depends on your emotional intelligence as a parent and your child's past experiences, upbringings, and unique personality. Partnering with parents to identify their and their child's needs in regards to emotional intelligence and strategies is one of my passions. I absolutely love doing this as an emotional intelligence specialist. That said, before I move on, I want to offer you a special one-time gift, and that is a free one-hour parenting with emotional intelligence session with me personally, and we'll discuss how you can teach your child emotional intelligence based on their unique personality and needs. So if you are listening or watching to this podcast before September 23rd, 2021, 
this offer is still valid. Now, this session typically runs around 275 US dollars an hour, and this is my gift to you. So I am offering it at no cost, and you can find the link to sign up in the show notes. All right. So again, you have until September 22nd to register for this because it expires prior to September 23rd. All right, back to the discussion. While there are many nuances to effectively understanding and managing triggers, here are a few basics that may help you. So first, help your child to identify triggers by noticing patterns in their behavior. What situations do they consistently react to? For instance, are they normally grumpy after spending the day with a particular playmate? Or do they consistently lose their cool when asked to complete a certain task? Next, ask what emotions and feelings they're experiencing whenever they're in that situation or around that person, etc. Help them to identify the need behind these emotions. For example, maybe being around a particular person is draining their energy, which is causing them to become grumpy. And the need behind that emotion might be that they just need a nap or some quiet time to refuel. Now, if a particular task is making them moody, it may be because they feel that it's taking time away from engaging in more enjoyable activities. And in that case, the need may be something to look forward to, right? Like the joy that comes with having something to look forward to after they complete that task. Like, After we get this done, we can play X game or we can go outside and do X activity. Also, once you know the source behind their feeling, then you can help them to create a game plan for how to manage their emotions or mitigate a feeling before they encounter a certain trigger. Using the prior examples, this might be spending less time with that particular playmate so they're not so tired or overly tired that they become grumpy. So this kind of prevents that grumpy behavior. In regards to the task, you could teach them how to focus more on what they have to look forward to after completing the task instead of how much they dislike the task in that moment. So again, there are many ways to go about this and not all of them will work for every trigger or every child, right? Because your child is unique. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up for today. So let's do a quick recap. If you are an expecting parent, developing your emotional intelligence is extremely important to ensuring the health and the wellness of your unborn child. And this will be the topic for next week's conversation. If you have an infant, Make sure to keep a check on your own emotions when around them because they're absorbing that data, right? That's around them like a sponge. You can also help your infant soothe by giving them something to suck on or playing some play music like Wheels on the Bus or the Hokey Pokey. For toddlers, begin to teach them how to identify their emotions and also express to them your own feelings so that you're modeling that behavior for them. Give them options to help them release their emotional energy, like stomping or screaming into a pillow. As your child emotionally matures, help them to expand their awareness by teaching them to identify their triggers, mitigate the reactions from those triggers, and help them to create a game plan for how they are going to go forward when they're about to experience an emotional trigger. For additional tools and strategies, I recommend checking out last week's episode, which was, I believe, how to help your child self-soothe. But yeah, so that's all for today's Parenting with Emotional Intelligence. Until next time, live and lead with an open heart and an open mind. Thanks for watching.